Hi there. So I was going to try and do this while driving in the car, but it's not going to be a part of this driving blog series. Um, so basically the previous video that I did and some other videos and comments that I've made here and there on the channel and Facebook and, and, and other places that I've seen it, there seems to be confusion about two main issues with the aging Model S. So we're talking the 2012 through the 2019s, referring to the drive units, which is the large rear drive unit, which I'll talk about in the second part of this video and the 2012 through the, I don't know, 2016, 2017s, however late they made the 85 and 90 packs until the 100 came out. So there are, uh, we'll talk about the battery packs first. So first thing I want to point out is that the 85 packs are probably the most uh, trouble prone for water ingress. Now water ingress can refer to anything from actual water to air conditioning condensation lines, which I have another video on this channel where I show you how to reroute that, which is important on the older cars. By the time they came out with the dual motor cars that were also 85 packs at launch, the 85Ds in P85Ds, they had changed where that coolant line routes. And I don't think it's a problem on those as new builds, but on older cars, so like 2012 through all of 2014, uh, you're going to want to check and see where your air conditioning condensation line is going because it might be dumping it right on the top of the pack. And on the older packs, the pyro fuse has an access cover on the top of the pack. So it collects that water, it sits in there, seeps in, and can short out and cause all kinds of damage and problems inside the pack. On the later build packs and on the 90 packs, those fuses are accessed from underneath. So the top of the pack is a little bit more sealed and less prone to that. However, the other way that water I can get inside the packs is through the, um, it's a blank on what you call them. It's a, uh, it's a, um, like a weather seal. Uh, it's, it's to keep the pressure. It's a pressure seal. It's to keep the pressure in and outside the pack somewhat equalized. So it's supposed to be a watertight, uh, thing, uh, like a vent. It's like a vent seal, but, uh, they can fail and get stuck or get damaged and, and, or, or get overwhelmed. And that can cause water ingress as well. So if you have a pack go wrong, when you start getting all of these battery errors, what can you do? Well, the first thing you want to typically do, uh, obviously see what Tesla says remotely. Uh, replacing the 12 volt battery is a common thing to do because having the 12 volt go bad can generate a lot of really scary errors, but it's actually not a big deal. On later cars, especially the dual motors, it's an easy thing to do by yourself because the battery is right there in the front of, of the frunk. On the older cars, it can be more difficult because it's buried deep uh, underneath the cowling and under some other uh, high voltage junctions you, you probably don't want to mess with. Mobile service will do it for about $250. And in my experience, the battery itself was like $170 if I wanted to buy it somewhere else. So to me, it was a really good value to have mobile service come and they can swap it. They do this all the time. They're really good at it. Uh, and, and I don't electrocute myself and I don't kill my car. So that's always the first thing to check is the, is the 12 volt battery and replace that. Um, the other thing to look for, especially on the older cars, is the ground studs. So there's two ground studs in the nose uh, of the Model S. We're talking underneath the front. You can't see them without removing the whole tub, but removing the front tub is not really that difficult. It's just a lot of screws and some clips and, and you'll figure it out. There's lots of videos how to do it. Eventually I'm going to do mine preemptively if I don't if it doesn't break in the <laughs> beforehand. And when I do that, I will do a video of it. But basically you're going to pull out that front tub and there's a stud on either side. I believe on the driver's side, if that one goes bad, you'll get all kinds of errors about, I think, uh, brake pressure or, or, or uh, I think the power steering goes out. It's, it's like some weird things that happen on that side. If the one on the passenger side goes out, which seems to be more common for whatever reason, uh, you'll get what look like battery errors. And I think you'll get uh, isolation fault and I'm trying to think what else it tends to do. I think that um, the frunk latch is affected by that ground stud. So you'll get a, like the frunk will be, you know, the hood will be uh, latched down, but it won't detect that it's latched. So it's like a, a bad reading there. So there's a, there's a few distinctive symptoms depending which stud it is, uh, but they tend to just corrode and, and, and break off. And when they break off, it causes mayhem. Um, there are a variety of ways you can uh, reground that, that uh, stud. And uh, the main thing is to pull out that frunk, check those studs, and, and I mean really check them uh, because they can look totally intact and actually not be making the electrical connection. So I'm not going to get into how to do all that, but, but those are the two quick and easy things you can do before you go to the, the point of replacing a battery pack. So 
if it turns out you do need to replace the battery pack, there are um, not as many options as the, the, the kind of flippant comments on Facebook and Twitter would suggest. Uh, my recommendation is that you get a pack from Tesla. And, and that's just the bottom line. So let's get into a couple of the other ones. So the first one I see a lot is like, well, you just go to a third party. Okay, well, let's be clear. There's no evidence to suggest that there's any way to repair a failed pack. None. You can't just snip out the broken cell. Uh, you can't just swap out modules. Uh, if the pack is imbalanced, it will fail. It may work for a brief period of time, but it will eventually fail. Uh, as I understand it, Electrified Garage did some of these repairs and they don't do them anymore. At least as far as I know, they don't do them anymore because they, of the failure rate. So if you're going to go through a third party, you're looking at getting a full pack swap. Uh, and, and a pack that was not cobbled together from other packs, but an actual like a salvage or an otherwise um, road retired pack that's intact. Uh, the other uh, company I see mentioned a lot is 057 Tech. But as you can hopefully see from this post here, the owner of that company, Jason Hughes, uh, sold the company. So it's no longer 057 Tech, and there was a lot of talk about service plans being offered on these old 85 packs. And um, I don't know that they're, I don't think they're selling any more service plans, and I'm not entirely sure that they're honoring the service plans that they sold based on the, what I see on the forums. So that option is no longer there. I wouldn't use Gruber for a variety of reasons, uh, and, and, and so now you're down to the only other company I know of that's doing a uh, large scale, uh, nationwide, uh, service for pack swaps is resell, R E C E L L dot com. Uh, just like resell battery cell, uh, resell is using packs from, I'm not sure where exactly, but they, they, uh, have a, a fairly large operation and their prices are undercutting Tesla by a, enough that maybe if, if you're not keeping the car, it might, might be a good deal. Um, I think you can get a pack swap, including shipping one way to their facility, which uh, is in Texas, but I think they're opening another one in New Jersey if it's not open already. Uh, again, this is information as of early 2024, so who knows how long this video will be up, but if you've gotten this far, uh, make sure you double check this if it's too much past early 2024. But they include shipping one way, and at the moment, I think their prices are running somewhere between $7,000 and $10,000 for a refurbished, uh, well, it's not a refurbished pack, for a resale pack, whatever that is. And you'd have to check with them how they're doing it. They say they're not salvage, but I'm not really sure. If, I'm not really sure where their packs are from. But uh, why I don't recommend them, uh, I think they're great if you're going to sell the car, you know, shortly after, because now you've got a working car you can sell or or you know, give to Carvana if they're still in business when you see this, or CarMax or whatever. The reason is, especially for me, uh, my service center is like uh, a mile away from here. So I can, I can walk to the service center. And the concern I have is that once you've done business with one of these third-party companies, you're married to that third-party company forever. So any warranty work that you need to have done on that pack any kind of service that needs to be done on that battery or possibly that electrical system, you now have to go to that third party company because Tesla won't touch it. And if it's not local to you, then you're talking about shipping the car, most likely because it's not working uh, one way or the other. And for instance, even from, from here in Pittsburgh to New Jersey is an expensive trip for a car to go and it takes a lot of time. So, uh, that's one of the concerns. The other concern would be that if you did have a battery, a battery pack replaced, and then I decided, you know, it failed outside of that warranty. And I was like, well, I got to replace this pack again. Uh, and I go to Tesla. Tesla's not going to give me any value for that pack because it's not theirs. Uh, it's not a pack that they refurbished. It's not a pack that is new from Tesla. So they're just going to say, no, we don't know what that pack is. So you don't get the core value for that pack. And you have to now pay the full new price for a refurb or a new pack. So those are my concerns with doing it third party. And, um, and I just think the Tesla right now, they're extremely expensive, but they're still the best, the best deal going. And as far as what the prices are, I got to find it here in my notes. I have notes. The prices last that I have seen are that the refurbished pack. So there's two, two different packs that they're basically putting in these cars. The nineties have chemistry issues. So they tend to degrade fast at the beginning and then they kind of flatten out. So you might get a remanufactured 90 or possibly a remanufactured 
85. And then the other one that they're putting out is a new build 90. Um, so the refurbished ones, this is an invoice of a friend of mine. There, you see, it's not quite $15,000. This will vary a little bit depending on your suspension. You may have to upgrade suspension parts. If you have an 85 and you get a 90, there's a weight difference. So they might have to change some of the bushings and things like that. Uh, the new build packs are running around twenty or $21,000. Tesla warranties these for four years, 50,000 miles. Here's the big catch. So your first inclination might be like mine. I want to get a new pack. I want to know it's good. The refurbs have kind of a um, hit and miss variety to how reliable they are. So you're like, well, I'll get, I'll get the new pack. So you spend six or $7,000 in addition to get the, the new build pack if it's available, which is also a big question mark because Tesla doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not like ordering something from Amazon where they just send the pack you ask. You kind of get whatever the service center has available at that time, or you're looking at an extremely long wait. And I think if you hold out for a new pack and they're not making new packs at that particular quarter, it could be months. So that that's an issue. Anyway, but let's say you do get a new pack. If for some reason that new pack fails during that warranty period, Tesla will take it back in and they will fix the car for you and give you a refurbished pack. So you spend the additional money to get a new build pack to avoid the hit and miss aspect of having a refurbished pack. And if you get the miss on the new pack, you still get a refurbished pack and you're still out the extra six or $7,000. It's a, it's a tough calculation you have to make as to your risk tolerance on either one of these decisions. But that just happens to be where we are with regard to battery packs right now. So there you go. Now, I, this is running longer than I thought it would, but I'm trying to be thorough. So uh, I'm gonna just set this up and, and kind of make this into two videos and we'll talk about the drive units in the next video so that it's separate but I'm going to give you a scenario that a friend of mine had. So he had a drive unit water, uh, a coolant ingress problem, which is what we'll talk about in the other video. As a result of that, it shorted out or caused a short in a battery pack, uh, blew the pyro fuse. And he ended up with the combined nightmare of a pack and a drive unit that needed to be replaced at the same time. And that along with uh, a new air conditioning compressor because that got taken out by the high voltage error and a coolant heater that they found at the same time and the 12 volt, uh, which had to be done. This was his estimate for a, for, for basically to refix a car that had, I think 260,000 miles on it. It was $24,000. Uh, he did not fix that car and uh, he sold it for I don't know, three or $4,000 to somebody who then did fix it uh, using whatever salvage parts. That car never got a salvage title on it. So a uh, drive unit from a crash car was installed with a aftermarket fix on the coolant issue, which I'll talk about in the next video. And the isolation fault turned out to just be the pyro fuse, which was replaced for some unknown cost. But, but basically, that car was put back on the road by somebody who had the ability to change that whole rear subframe and drive unit and, and do that work. And um, for way less than $24,000. But that is the nightmare scenario. So uh, to wrap this up, I will do another video where I'll just talk about the drive unit as things stand right now. And uh, you can look for that. I don't know, I'll probably link it below. Like, share, subscribe, all those youtube -y things. Sorry this isn't flashy. You don't get to see all the scenery going by my glass roof, but um, it's just way too complicated for me to keep my thoughts uh, on track. And uh, so, I don't know, I guess I'll have to do this for stuff that's not just me ranting. All right, thank you for watching. And, watching? Thank you for watching. And uh, I'm going to do the other video right now.